In this video, I want to show you how to use Java streams. They still cause a lot of confusion, especially among the classical Java developers who work less with declarative languages or language patterns. By the way, streams here means the functions from Java or Chill stream, not to be confused with the input and output streams from Java.io, of course, which are quite a bit older. What we want to look at today are these constructs here. Something like this might be difficult to read for developers who program imperatively, but I'll show you that it's actually not and that the readability of these statements is one of their biggest advantages. And I promise you, in the end, you won't want to do without streams anymore. Let's jump right in with an example to understand what we're talking about. We have a class person. A person has a name and an age, and we have already created a list of persons and added some people to it. The task, we now want to have all minors from this list. And we do this first with the imperative approach. So we create a list minors, and then we would iterate with a for loop over the first list of persons. We ask per person if they are younger than 18, at least in most countries and in Germany where I come from, if you're 18 or older, you are considered to be an adult. And so if that's the case, we add them to the list. That's the classic approach. But how does it look now with streams? We first create a list of people again, call it minus per stream. And for that, we take the original list of people, stream it, then filter on all people younger than 18 and give it back to us as a list. Done. And as a proof, we compare both lists, minors and minus per stream, and lock the comparison to the console. And the result is true. It is immediately noticeable the whole thing is a bit more compact. We have no for loop, no if statement, a little less lines, and it didn't look that complicated. But what exactly happens here? How do streams work? First of all, a stream always has to be open first, which is quite easy for a list via the class function stream. From this point on, I stream on the references of this list, and then I I simply chain further operations behind it. We distinguish between intermediate and terminal operations. Intermediate operations always return another stream. This is what we had in our previous example with filter. Filter is intermediate. We have a stream before and a filtered stream after, but always with the original references. No copy or anything like this is created here. Terminal operations, on the other hand, go through a stream to perform functions on the individual elements, for example, to return a certain result, a certain value, and they terminate at the stream. After that, I can't execute anything on it until I open a new stream. We had this in the previous example with two list. This method accumulates the elements of the stream into another list, which we then can use for other stuff. Another example, we are now working on a very simple array with the numbers from 0 to 9. In this array, we can stream again and then we use for each. For each is a terminal operation, that means it goes through the stream to perform operations on the individual elements. We can just pass a lambda expression with n and then lock the value on the console. And in this case, we can even abbreviate the whole thing quite simply with a double colon. And here is the result. And if we, for example, want to return only five elements, we can use limit. We pass the value and the console will only show five elements. Let's get a little bit more complex in the next step. We will use the persons array from before again. We have already filtered out all minors. That was quite a useful expression. But what if we want to have all the names of the persons, for example? Then the method map comes into play and you will have a lot of fun with it. Map is intermediate. That means it returns a stream again, but only after we have applied a function to all the elements. And the convenient thing is that the stream that we get back doesn't have to be of the same data type as the original stream. So it's not about filtering or sorting, and I'll show you that now. Again, the example from earlier. We first open up a stream again on all the persons, and if we want to have all the names, for example, we can write map and pass a lambda expression here, and then per person element, we return the name, and we can now just save it, or we can just directly output it to the console again. That's it. And if we want to sort all persons, for example, by their name, then we can use the method sorted. It expects a comparator, and we can simply specify it as a lambda expression. And there we simply compare the first name of person one with the first name of person two, and here you can see the result. And if our class even implements the interface comparable, I'll show you that here with the class person implements comparable, then uh, we generate the method and implement compare to. Then in this case, it's just enough if we call sorted here. The same result. That's quite elegant. In the next step, we're going to get a bit more complex, and that's where you'll see the advantage of streams. What we are getting to know now is flat map. 
In our example, we have now a class for businesses with a name and a list of employees. And we've already created three companies, Google, Apple, and Amazon. And we added a few people to each company. Now in the first step, we're going to try to just output the names of the companies again. We stream the companies, we already know this, map to return name here in each case, and then just lock the result. We can also get a little bit more elegant here with a double colon for the name. That works. But what if we want the names of the employees? Then we can use flat map. This is similar to map, but allows us to work with nested data structures. Here, after the stream, where we stream the companies, we write flat map. And here again, per lambda expression, we can now call the getter on the employees. We stream this again. And at this point, we now have a stream on the people. And we can now output the names of the employees, which are persons here, and that works as well. We can now sort them again if we want to, as before, we already know that simply by sorted. And with a filter, for example, on the companies, we can now make sure that we only get the employees of the companies where the company starts with an A. Uh, we test the whole thing and it works. We see Lara and Peter are not in the results. And of course, we can also filter the employees. For example, we can say we only want to have employees who are at least 30 years old. And if we want to save the whole thing to a string, we can do that by collect. We can join the collection concatenated with a comma. We assign the whole thing to a variable and finally output that on the console. And this is the result. That's really cool. A few lines of code and quite a few operations performed. And now to really show the advantage of streams, we implement the same thing without Java streams. In the first step, we want to find out all employees of companies whose name starts with A. We create a helper object, a list with people, then we iterate over all companies and check for each one if it starts with an A. And if it does, we add the employees to our list. Now we sort the list, that's where we can just call compare to. And then we want all employees that are at least 30, we create a helper object again, iterate over our previous employee list and check for each employee if they are older than 30. And if he is, we add him to our new list. Now we're almost there. We still want to return it concatenated as a string now. We use a string builder to do this, go over our current list and then add each first name separated by a comma. The last comma has to be omitted and at the end we output the result. This really shows us where the advantages of streams are. Of course, I could still shorten this somehow and pack it together via another loop in the loop, but honestly, that's not intuitively understandable anymore. The stream way, however, is very easy to understand. First, we stream the businesses, filter out all that start with an A, run flat map to get the employees, sort the employees, then get all that are at least 30. At the end, we join the whole thing to a string. And that is the main advantage of streams, of declarative programming in general. With declarative programming, the description of the problem is always in the focus, so I can directly see the intention of the developer. With imperative programming, the opposite programming paradigm, there is only a sequence of instructions. They are executed one after another, but we may not always immediately see the meaning behind them. Both approaches bring us to the result, but with a declarative approach, one can often write methods more comprehensible and one also saves some lines of code. However, there are also disadvantages. For example, streams are less performant. A for loop through an array that is insanely performant. It needs little CPU and little memory. Streams are a little bit worse in comparison. But for most cases that shouldn't matter. Also debugging can be a bit more cumbersome if, say, an exception is thrown inside the stream. But all in all, I'm a big fan of streams. They usually produce more concise, shorter methods. And together with Lambda functions we really have a very efficient toolbox. Thanks for watching and if you like my video I would really appreciate a like or comment. See you next time.